before I begin, I want to thank the Jane Foundation and Sarah and everybody on the team to, for having invited me to come speak to you. I'm usually very excited to speak to patients, and as I progress through the talk, you will know that. I think my pitch will will progressively get higher and higher. Um, but I'm very thankful for you guys to, uh, for being here, for being willing to listen to me at like 4.30 in the evening, at the end of the day. So I hope that I am gonna learn a lot from you, which I've already done through the day, and you will learn from me, which I know a lot of your, your patient um, peer have actually shared already. So this is going to be very interesting. Okay, so the title of my talk today is, there is a slash app, assistive device for that. Um, my talk today is going to be a lot about occupational therapy, yes, but it will be a lot about what you could do here and now. Okay, um, and if you are willing to share, maybe after this, you could share some of your experiences as well. Okay? Uh, okay, what will I cover in the talk today? First, what is occupational therapy? What is this unknown therapy? Second is, how can occupational therapy help you? Um, so I'll be specifically talking about three points. Occupational therapy does a lot of things, but I'll talk about three main concepts. One is remediation. Second one is prevention, spe specifically a concept called energy conservation, which you probably are doing it without even thinking about it. But if you're not, listen up. Um, and adaptation or compensation, specifically assistive devices. I see many of you already have been introduced to it, but there is a lot more out there. The, again, just as Roche said and a lot of others talked through the day, the field of assistive technology is, is searing really, really fast. They're, they are, they are really um, progressing in leaps and bounds in terms of what is available out there. However, we tend to stick to our canes and wheelchairs, but there's much more than that out there. Okay, so we'll, I'll touch a little bit about that. Also, um, I will talk about the importance of these concepts to improve your quality of life and how to take ownership for it. Okay, all right. Okay, before I begin, how many of you actually know what OT is or have had experience with an OT? Oh, a few people, very good. Okay, um, that's good because I, I I'm happy to see at least somebody knows what OT is because usually people will get a physical therapy referral and if you're like really, really progressed, you may or may not get OT. So I'm excited that some, some of you actually have talked to an OT before. However, you will be surprised how much more your OT can offer you um, beyond what you already probably were given, you know, like the standard care. Um, and I love that particular poster because most people talk about physical therapy. I'm like, oh, you know. Okay, so what is occupational therapy? First of all, occupational therapy, again, is not physical therapy, okay? It is not vocational rehab. This happens to me, like within the first year of me working as an OT, I have my old patient tell me, I don't need OT because I am retired. I'm like, oh, okay. So, um, okay, so, so we're not talking about occupation as a job, it, but it is about the extraordinary things and the ordinary things that you do in your everyday life, okay? Also, occupational therapy is not nursing. Every time I worked in a patient's room, my patient would, if they got a phone call, they would say, um, hold on, my nurse is here. I'm like, no, I, I'm an occupational therapist, not your nurse. So, the, just saying that. So what is occupation? So again, again, let's clarify that. Again, I said, it's the things that you do in daily life. It's the simple things that you do, and also the extraordinary things that you do. So I see people like picking their cup of coffee, um, people looking at me, people sitting and standing up, people walking, all these things you do without thinking. But when you have muscle weakness, it becomes a chore. It becomes extraordinarily hard to do. And that's where an OT can actually help you 
choose techniques and choose um, like devices and choose tricks to do it better and to do it without putting yourself at risk. Okay, all right. So the OT actually assists individuals of all ages. So it's not just adults, we work with babies as well. And we help them participate with age appropriate things that they want to do and they need to do. Because I had one patient one time, because remember OT, in like acute care in a hospital is paid for teaching patients ADA activities of daily living, like dressing and bathing. And my patient was like, uh, I have somebody to do that for me. I want to paint. I don't want to do dressing and bathing. So for an OT, it's like, okay, okay, that's what we are going to work on. If that's what you want, that's what our goal is going to be. Okay. Um, and also we use these activities as your therapeutic mean. So we don't use exercise, but we use picking up a cup as our exercise. Okay, all right. So what OT typically include is, first of all, they're customized treatments. They, are, like, so you, say, you can, like for a particular condition, you can have, say, oh, this works, that works, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. However, the OT can help you figure out a plan that is specific to your wants because what you value is what you value. Okay, if somebody likes painting, not another patient or me myself may not like painting. Like, so it's not something that's of interest to one patient, maybe very meaningful to another patient. Right? So it's a very customized plan. Second is OTs can help do a home or a job site evaluation and help you to come up with adaptation recommendations to perform within, within your environment. Okay. Um, they also can assess skills and device treatment modalities based on what I said before. Again, something that they do a lot um, is to help you pick out adaptive equipment and train you how to use it. So sometimes people will give you, say, here is a device, or you go to a drugstore and it's there and it looks interesting, but if you don't know how to use it correctly, it's, a, it's just your money wasted, I think. Okay. All right. And also, the OT helps caregivers and family members also to participate, um, again, well, and also without, without having the risk of um, falls or injury both to the patient, I mean to a client, and their caregivers. Okay. All right, so OTs do a lot of things and work with a lot of skills. The eight things that are usually defined in our uh, framework of practice are ADLs, which are activities of daily living, IADLs, which are instrumented activities of daily living, education, work, play, leisure, rest and sleep, no, most people don't think of OT helping with that, and social participation. Okay, we'll talk some bit about that. Okay, so remember I said I'm gonna talk about three main areas. The first one is remediation. And what that means is an OT can help you maintain or preserve your current level of functioning. Okay, so if you can do something, we want to maintain that as long as possible. Okay, and an OT can help you learn that. Also, if you're starting to lose function slowly, and it's like the OT can help you learn to figure out how to, you probably will figure it out. Like I heard a lot of your, your patient peers share that. Like I heard Josh talk about it, and I heard um, Molly talk about it. So it, it, you, they, they, everybody figures it out. However, an OT can make your pro process of figuring out so much more efficient. Okay. Um, so again, we talk about ADLs, like it slips out of our tongue, but what is it? It is task that requires us to get us going. But whether, and it's also the task that helps you get your body from one place to another, and then to close out your day in the evening. So it's, it's, it's things like, it's things that you don't even, like before you take for granted, like bathing, dressing, uh, toileting, grooming, eating, drinking, things that you, you know, uh, things you're putting a bow in your hair. Um, and then you have something called instrumented ADLs, which is things that are beyond what you do for yourself. It would be things like cooking, driving, 
um, using a telephone or going shopping, things that you know you still think that you need to do for yourself, right? Okay. All right. So, um, some when I, I I like to listen to patient stories because they tell like they share their individual experiences and it helps us learn certain things. And in one of the stories that I heard about Allison, somewhere down in her story, she says something. The downside to my manual chair is that it has caused my arms to deteriorate with a focus on the word quickly. I am having trouble with them now because of the progression of the disease, of course, and the fact that I have overworked them. Okay. Um, just to link back to um, Roche's presentation an hour ago, he talked about using your muscles wisely or losing it fast, right? We remember that, right? Yeah? Um, so OTs can help you prevent this sort of quick deterioration, okay? And um, the concept that you probably use it unconsciously, you know, is, is called energy conservation or work simplification, okay? And we'll talk about some practical ideas of how you can do that. What it is, is, is basically you save your energy and avoid fatigue when doing things related to ADLs and work and leisure. It's like, some people say, oh, I have to push. I have to push through the speed. I need to do, every, like if my to-do list is 100 items long, I need to get through all of it. Um, when in fact, you don't, you don't. All right. um, and also the concept of muscle protection. It's like we learned that. We need to protect our muscles so that um, over time, they're still around to help us, okay? Again, remember, use muscles wisely or lose it fast, okay? There are four basic principles that you could use to conserve energy. And when I tell you some of those things, you'll be like, oh, yes. I either do it or, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, the, fir the four are prioritization, planning, Pacing and posture, okay? And we'll see what that is. Okay, prioritizing is the elimination or reduction of things that are not important to you, okay? If you don't have to see your mother-in-law, that's okay. All right, um, delegate tasks to friends and family who offer to help you. It's not a sign of weakness. We've heard this throughout the day as a theme, right? Um, Chris just mentioned, don't be shy to ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness. Okay? All right. Um, actually, most of your family and friends would be appreciative for the fact that you ask them to help. It's, you know, because they, you treat them as your own. So um, also consider hiring professionals for things that you would normally do. Yes, it might be a hair expensive, but it will help you live not so tired through your life, okay? Like, you know, it, yeah. okay. So get, get a cleaning lay, a lady in that in genderism, so a cleaning person, um, or somebody to take care of your baby, in like a babysitter or a mother's helper, or get somebody to do your lawn, or don't worry about it, it can grow wild. Um, so do whatever it takes to cut your workload down. The second thing is a little bit of planning helps, okay? So some of the techniques is before you begin anything, have everything together before you start. If you're anything like me, you'll be running up and down two levels all day. It's like you start something and it's like, oh, I need to get that. Oh, I, I forgot this. So it just, it, it, it's that much more work for your muscles, it's that much more time, it's that much more energy. So protect your muscles and protect your energy by planning, okay? Second, another tip that I can give is like, for instance, if you have to say go shopping, um, call the store and ask them, hey, do you have the item that you need? Suppose you're going to Lowe's or Home Depot, call them. So you don't have a wasted trip, right? Um, another, another task which, you know, it's out there but we don't think to use is, Online services, like you can order online and pick up in the store. Usually they're shipped to store and it's free. So um, use a delivery service, um, say for groceries like Peapot. Do you guys, 
know what Peapod is? Yeah, it's a, it's, Peapod is an online grocery um, service. It's available in some of the bigger cities. And what it is is you basically shop online and you, you pay with your credit card and they come deliver it to you at home. So your ice cream is like really, really cold and your fresh produce is really, really fresh and you didn't have to pick up a finger to get it. So use the services. Even local stores like Kroger, they don't do Peapod like, but if you, you can shop online and they will actually get all the, gather all whatever you've asked for and you go and you just pick it up. There's a small fee for that service, but it's well worth your time and your energy. Um, there are several other online services um, that are available. Like you can have somebody do your laundry online. Did you guys know that? There is an app for that, actually. But um, yes, pricey, but if you need it, it is an option and it is available. Um, buy clothes, zoolily.com. It comes, pops up in your Facebook browser all the time. Okay. okay. Another tip I can say is cook in large quantities and portion it out or use pre-prepared, like semi-prepared foods um, from your favorite store. Um, it'll just, again, you don't have to do all the cutting and chopping from scratch if you don't have to. Okay, all right. Um, another tip is work rest breaks into activities as long as possible. Don't take a break after you're going to like fall down dead, no. You, you take a break so that you don't get that tired. So instead of saying, oh, I will take a break whenever, actually schedule a break. Saying, okay, I, I, so, you know, I, I'm gonna do this for 20 minutes and then take a break. Okay. Yeah, it, it seems logical, right? It seems like, oh, that's what I do, but I'll tell you, most of you don't. Okay, all right. Now schedule enough time for activities, rushing for things, consumes energy, okay? Me with that toddler, I'll tell you that it's true, okay? All right, again, another tip is to rearrange your furniture, your environment, basically. So keep things that you need often in accessible places and things that you don't need as often a little bit farther versus like a hodgepodge of places. That little planning will save you that many more trips, that many more climbing up step stools, um, just simple idea. Also, replace existing, like suppose you have this really heavy stoneware dinner set, um, put that away, don't worry about it. Paper plates and napkins are awesome. So, um, your dishwasher will thank you. Um, Another thing is install long handles on faucets and knobs. It actually reduces the amount of grip strength that you need to use for your smaller muscles. And you don't have to adduct and anchor your, your forearm that much to open it. It, it, like, it just uses a mechanical lever force to do it that much more easier. So long handles, okay. Um, Instead of, another idea is to install pull out or swing out shelving in cabinets. There are interesting, again, adaptive devices out there which, where your entire cabinet can actually be put on a hydraulic lift which can come down to your height. So you don't have to like actually reach out and stand on step stools. So it's out there. Um, if, if, if you fancy something in your gourmet kitchen, so, okay. Um, think about having like aprons that you can put on where you can stuff tools or a little tool bag so you don't have to like, okay, walk and get things. You have everything ready, ready to go in whatever task you're ready to do. Okay. I will talk about two more things which we tell patients regardless of their um, condition if they are trying to conserve energy. One is if you can have a first floor bedroom, um, do it, yeah. But if you can't, there for those who are more involved and going up and down stairs is an, is difficult. There is something called a stair lift. You guys heard of it? Stair lift? Okay. Yeah. Um, stair lifts are usually, like depending upon your insurance, will be covered by them. However, they do need a good. I, I remember Josh talking about that. It's like a good letter of necessity for it. 
Okay, and usually a lot of the stair lift companies will, will help you do that in conjunction with an OT who is certified to, to give those sort of recommendations. So they as a team can help you get the stair lift without for you having to pay everything out of pocket. Okay, again, it depends on the state you are in and it depends on the, the service that you go with, but there, there are options. Okay. Um, and the second thing is things that you use frequently, suppose you live on two levels, have duplicates. So if you have like a vacuum down and a vacuum up, um, it's much easier than having to haul anything up. Like I'm not saying that you should vacuum because according to energy conservation, delegate, delegate it. Okay, all right. Um, the other concept, remember, we're still talking about the four Ps, right? We, f we did planning, we did prioritization, now we're doing pacing. It's to like create a balance between rest and activity. We talked about that, it's important. Okay, take regular breaks, even though it's something very exciting that you're doing, don't do gardening all day. No people, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, but okay. Also, if it's difficult, use a diary to pace your activities. Okay, it's like if you can't remember it, write it down. And also, help, adopting a more regular routine will help you um, pace better. And of course, I cannot say enough, a good night's rest is very healing. And my husband, Roche, will, will um, he's a big proponent of having a good night's rest. Though I have to confess, um, neither of us do. So. And the last one is about posture. It's like adjust workspaces to you. Like how many of us will sit on adjustable ch chairs and never adjust it? Because we don't know what those dials and pieces are. But they're there for a reason. It helps you work, like versus trying to do like this, it'll actually keep you in a good posture and it'll prevent your muscles from working harder to achieve an optimal position. So use those things, it's there for a reason. Okay, and sit rather than stand, and if you have to, use a, like a bar stool. I heard Molly and Josh talk in your, for those of you who were in, in that breakout session, they talked about using a stool for like easy sitting and standing, and it is a very good idea. So if you're cooking, sit on a bar stool to cook rather than stand all throughout. Okay. All right. Um, again, sit with a supportive chair. I have to say the chairs that you're sitting on is too upright. Okay, good. <laughs> but I sat in it and I got so fatigued. I was like, mm. so you know, if you have a chair that has a slightly higher back which supports you up top, you probably will sit much more relaxed. Not slouchy, but okay. Okay. And avoid excessive twisting. So if you if you have to turn, turn as a body versus for some reason, it helps you conserve energy. Okay. All, right. All right. Also, the last point in this category, I would say, is reduce or eliminate unnecessary effort. Effort. It's not being lazy. It's being smart. <laughs> okay. Use adaptive equipment to make things easier for you. We're going to talk about some of those ideas. Electric jar opener, anybody? <laughs> okay. All right. If you type a lot. There is a software, again, there is an app for that. Um, it's called Dragon, it, it's called Dragon or Nuance. Um, I put the link up there so it, when we post it, you'll, you'll be able to access it or just say Nuance Dragon. It basically is a voice recognition software. It, it converts what you say into typed print. How cool is that? We were not gonna even be tech, oh, actually it already exists on phones, Never mind. Okay, all right, another idea is to soak your dishes before you wash. How many of us have stood over kitchen sinks trying to scrub dried goop of stuff? So yes, I rest my case. Um, again, use prepared foods, I cannot say that enough. Um, Whole Foods has uh, peeled oranges, if you wanted any, just a joke, people, but they do really have it for $6. Okay, get a rolling cart so that you don't actually have to cart your things in your hand. How much more work you're doing if you're holding them in your hand. So make it easier. And also, um, 
If you are going to shop in a store, oh my God, those scooters that they provide are fun. So try it. Okay. The, the last big chunk that I'm going to talk about is about adaptation or modification, which is the use of assistive technology. Now, I know that most of you have had some, some introduction to this because I've heard this like through, it was like a constant theme throughout the day. Actually, the disadvantage of going last is everybody's already said everything you were going to say. I'm like, hey, they're stealing my material. Okay. Anyway, so... Um, Adapt, use assistive te technology, it'll help improve your quality of life. Um, it could be low tech, like a cane. It could be high tech, like powered wheelchairs, like some of you have, I see, or scooters, I see that too. There are some things that are even more high tech. Um, one of the examples is, I'll just pull up the website for this. It's called EXO. Okay, it, uh, maybe we'll post a video or something. But look, you can Google it. It's called EXO, E-K-S-O. It's primarily used for patients currently, patients with spinal cord injury, to make people with spinal cord injury walk, including those who actually have no use of their arms and legs, like, or some use of their arms and no use of their legs. Okay, um, but as we are propelling the idea that we need to protect our muscles, maybe this is the way to go. We don't know, this is cutting edge, it's further down. But something for us to think about. It was primarily designed for, for an army application, so that soldiers could carry their heavy backpacks with the least amount of assistance. Okay, so um, something that we should, you know, like in terms of translational work could be a good avenue for us scientists to think about and you patients to think about. Okay, um, there, if, if you want more resources about assistive technology, there is an organization that does that. Um, it is the uh, Assistive Technology Industry Association and basically all manufacturers and certified users of assistive technology come, come to this organization. So you basically have lots of vendor choices that you could look up. Funky wheelchairs, interesting long-handled reachers, um, and d d interesting lifts, car modifications, all of that hang out at that website, okay? So look, check it out. Um, it might be something that you might find useful. Um, wait, how am I doing on time? Okay, almost there. Okay. Um, the one, so there are lots of categories of assistive technology that are there, but I, there's one thing that I would like to present to you, which I don't, see, I have not actually seen any of you have it, so I think it's interesting. It's called a mobile arm support. And what it basically does is, if you have shoulder weakness, you can actually move your arms out to do things like feeding or riding or drinking. Um, something to think about that. It might be something that you might, um, like, you know, consult with an OT to get one. Okay, let's see what it is. Now, there are many brands of it, I should warn you. I don't hear it. Okay. All right, I don't hear volume, but what, what it basically is, is, is a gravity eliminated device. And it's really smooth and it actually helps you, the patient like lift, because you have strength in your arms, but the shoulder is a problem, the girdle is a problem. So it'll actually help you bring your arm away from your body and bring your objects to your face, mouth, above your head. There are many brands. Neater is one of them, and they're based in the UK. But the one in the US is called Jayco. J A E C O. Just an introduction. Okay. 
So if you Google mobile ARM supports, you can see, see that. Again, there are a whole bunch of devices that I have listed out there. So once it's posted, you'll probably be able to access it. But another one, which again, to think about, it is the upper extremity, upper extremity orth, uh, orthotic uh, robotic device, which basically is like an exo for the arms. Okay, again, it's a prototype. It, the lower extra, again, Lots of research puts a lot of emphasis on walking. So lots of things about legs, but not so much about the arms. So we're a little behind for robotic devices for the arms, but it's getting there, okay? All right. And again, we talked about the voice, um, voice activated systems for your computers. Another thing is occupational therapists can, who are specialists in home modification. So if you go to a regular occupational therapist, they may or may not do it, but if they are certified to do home modifications, they can actually come into your home and do an assessment and give you an idea of what are the things that you could do to make your life in your home so much more safer and so much more comfortable. Okay, so um, not like home modifications may be paid by, like they might be financing options for, for home modifications. If you were in Michigan and you were in an in, not you, but if somebody was in an injury, they probably would get their entire home modified for free, but not in Michigan. But okay. Um, again, seating and positions, occupational therapists who are certified for seating and positioning can help you get the right kind of devices. So I, for those of you who were in the breakout session with Josh, he talked about the gel cushions or the foam cushions or the air cushions. Now, which one works for you? What is the one that is right for you? And an OT can help you figure that out versus having to try all of them that's in the market and say, oh, that's the one for you. They'll eliminate the guesswork. Okay, all right, and there's, the, if, if you are interested, so if you talk to Craig who's outside, and you say, okay, I want a modified car to drive, a certified driving rehabilitation specialist who's usually an OT will actually do an evaluation and can tell you all the cool things that are there and the things that might work for you, like individualized to you. Okay, so that's what OTs really do. Okay, so just to, Two more things before I run away is why bother? Why even bother about all the things? Saying it enables you to do what is of value to you, first of all. What do you value? And occupational therapy helps you do that. Second is you will be able to do things you always wanted to do. Like, okay. It improves quality of life both for you as patients as well as your caregivers. Okay. I've heard it time and time again, including Chris who just presented. It's like it prevents injury and helps prevent falls. It's like you, you don't want to fall because it causes additional deficits. Okay? Maintain, and to tie back to what Roche said, you, it'll help you maintain your muscle mass longer so that you can stay around and being independent for longer and have a better quality of life. And the, and, like as, just like Roche said, maintain your muscle mass to have a chance to benefit from the cutting edge research that is in the field. If you have no muscle, they might have the best cure that they might find, but if there's nothing there to help you, you've lost the chance. Yes, it might help somebody else, but we want us to help us now, right? So that's what you wanna do. And how can you have ownership, okay? one. Just a summary slide, protect your muscles from unnecessary dam damage, use assistive technology, it's out there. Explore the web for emerg emerging technologies. There are a lot of things out there. Reach out to professionals like occupational therapists who are specialists in assistive technology or driving or home modification. It, it will eliminate a lot of the guesswork that you would have to do to figure it out yourself. Advocate for referrals to such professionals because a lot of your neurologists may or may not refer you to OT early. They might do it later down the line when you're saying we could have prevented all this. And the last one is advocate for us, like for rehabilitation and for translational research, not just, okay, we're gonna do all this good work, but things that we can use now. Okay, all right. And that's all I have today.